Of all the inhabitants of Mordheim, only the Sisters of Sigma were prepared for its destruction. Cirrus Cassandora foretold of the disaster, and at their nightly vigil, the Maidens of Sigma heard the voice of Sigma speaking in their dreaming minds. Thus they knew that they would be safe in their fortress high above the city, raised as it is above the polluted vapors, if only they were prepared to survive the fire of Sigmar's fury. While the rest of Mordheim fell under a spell of madness, the sisters of Sigmar offered a prayer after prayer, scourging themselves to drive out all thoughts of sin, fervently accepting a punishing penitential regime to harden their minds against the wantonness running rampant outside their walls. The sisters gathered beneath their great temple dome. It was their prayers to Sigma that saved them from the fire. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? The human torch was denied a bank loan. The human torch was denied a bank loan. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Just warming up with my Ron Burgundy voice. And today we are going to come back to Mordheim. And we are building a custom kit-bashed 3D printed Sisters of Sigmar Warband. And this is one of the more obscure warbands in Mordheim and has a really cool lore to it and I found these great one-page rules uh, proxies for the Warhammer 40k Sisters of Battle army now these have a nun vibe to them the only thing is they do have some futuristic weapons on them so I'm going to Print those ladies up and I'm going to remove the futuristic elements and then I have some great files here from Artisan Guild and these are some interesting uh, human warriors basic human warriors which I downloaded to print for some D&D &D characters and the great thing about these guys is they have all these little weapons that are you can print basically separate and here I'm just starting off I have this old battle masters empire halberd dude and I'm gonna remove his leg and I'm gonna use that to fix a portion of one of the sisters here that printed out with her leg not intact I've got my little hobby clip clips out here. I got my super glue ready here. I'm gonna use a little bit of green stuff too to get this leg back on here. I'm gonna do a little surgery on this lady and you can see here I've super glued the leg on and then I have used some of that green stuff to smooth out the space in between to create a little pant leg there. So here you see I'm starting now to remove the guns and I'm going to keep those for another project for another day, throw them into the bits bin and I have printed out some medieval style weapons here. This uh, angry lady here has a sweet halberd and I use a little green stuff here and you can see here that I've added some weapons some maces, some axes, even some shields. This lady is like carrying a tabernacle or something. She's very extreme into her uh, Sigma religion here. And this is what I got so far for the warband. And I have primed these ladies black and I've done the Zenithal highlight. Uh, for those of you who are new to miniature painting, that's a black primer and then we take a white and a gray and we dry brush the raised surfaces of the model. And we're starting out our base with a slap chop, but we're going to take this a little bit further. And the color scheme I decided for these ladies was a 
black and yellow. So I'm starting with a yellow speed paint here from Army Painter and I'm just kind of choosing different areas, different pieces of cloth, some of the armor on the different models to create some variation here. And you see here I've painted some of the hoods yellow, I've painted some of the shirts yellow, I printed out that uh, big priestess lady and she's going to be the leader and I've uh, painted some of her yellow too. And now I'm taking my nice Vallejo gold and I'm going to hit some of the metallics on these Sisters of Sigmar. And the idea that I'm having here is that I'm basically going to kill two birds with one step. So I'm gonna get my gold and cover the metallic surface and then my next step is that I'm actually going to take a Gravelord Grey speed paint and I'm going to use that as a wash to create not only the black portions of the cloth um, but to also shade the recesses of the metallic portions and I've done so, some of the uh, metal pieces of the weapons and I've done some of the uh, armor pieces this uh, lady here has this little crown thing and before I do that though I'm gonna hit their faces and the exposed flesh with the Crusader skin speed paint and I probably talk about it in all my videos but I just really 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 like the Army Painter speed paints they're a fantastic product um, and if you're thinking about getting into hobbies and you are a beginner I think speed paints are like the perfect thing for a beginner um, yeah you can't go wrong and so now I have this Gravelord Grey that I was talking about earlier and I'm gonna go over the remaining cloth that is still white from the Zenithal highlight. I'm gonna go over the metallic and even the weapons too are gonna be this black color. There is gonna be a little bit of metallic on them but I like the way that that Gravelord Grey is just almost just like an automatic wash and it pulls into the resources and creates a nice sort of uh, black effect. I think you, there is also a speed paint that is actual black um, that would work uh, for this as well. I forget the actual name of it, but my plan is to actually enhance the blacks by hand with some normal acrylics uh, once we get to that phase. And now I'm taking my favorite color, that uh, hardened leather, and I'm gonna hit the bases here. And then now I'm moving on to create a little bit of some highlights on the yellow claw. And I'm making a gradient here with just a yellow and a white here. And I'm gonna start very gently glazing with some thinned yellow paint here. I'm gonna start glazing the surfaces that are a little bit raised here the spots that would catch the light the top of the shoulders the top of this uh, little loincloth type thing and you can see now how the yellow is becoming a little bit more dynamic there's there's a little bit more uh, detail on there and I really like how these gals are turning out and off camera I also just took a little normal black acrylic and just filled in the rims here and that always just kind of cleans it up it does just something nice to your model takes it from 25 percent to 50 percent love that step for some reason is just really satisfying now i've taken an orange speed paint and i watered it down with this acrylic medium here and i've created sort of a really thin glaze slash wash and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going over all the spots on the yellow fabric that I have applied the acrylic glazes to and I'm just gonna kind of numb water this down and that's gonna kind of marry 
all of the blending that we've done with the speed paint and the raised surfaces, it's going to blend it together really well. And you'll see a close up here in a second where you kind of be able to see the effect uh, a little bit more. And then for my final step here, I'm just going to take a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, and create a highlight here on the weapons. And that's pretty much all she wrote. There's a little tufts that we added to. We did a little tiny little spot highlighting. And that's it for these Sisters of Sigmar. And thanks for watching, guys. And there's that beautiful bean footage.